Psalm 19, and we'll just uh, we'll read verses 7 through 9 this time. It says, The law of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahweh is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of Yahweh are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of Yahweh is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of Yahweh is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of Yahweh are true and righteous altogether. As a result of, of the last message, if you hadn't already done so, I um, hope you've at least got a glimpse of, if not haven't even begun to, in fact, e- internalize Psalms 19, 7 through 9 in uh, maybe even to a deeper uh, way than you have uh, previously done so, and to make it personally yours. And as a result of doing so, I hope that you can also see that because Yahweh's law is indeed perfect and his judgments, again, altogether righteous, that his commandments, statutes, and judgments in particular are the one and only standard, the one and only standard, not just the standard, but the one and only standard uh, by which everything um, from our perspective must be judged, including, including, and for me particularly, the United States Constitution of America. Take your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, and and read with me verses 21 through 23. And I usually read from the King James as my pulpit uh, Bible. I'm going to read it to you from the New American Standard that I have in my notes here. It says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. In fact, that is, I think, the King James, now that I think about it. Um, but he says, Depart- I never knew you. I mean, they did all of these great things. They were claiming Christ as Lord. Again, a perfect picture of what we have in Christianity today. I mean, Christianity is claiming He's my Lord. I'm, I've surrendered my life to him. He's changed my life. And, I, and some of them are even claiming to do some of the things that are even said to, be a, to have been done at, in, at this time and age. You know, to cast out demons and perform miracles and prophesy and all of these things. And even those, because I question what's going on today, the claims, but even those who we know did those things in his name, he turned right around and said, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice iniquity. Now, instead of iniquity, and this is the reason New American Standard was on my mind, the the New American Standard renders it more correctly lawlessness. It's translated from the Greek word anomia, nomia being the Greek word for law in the New Testament in the majority, if not all, of the cases. And the prefix a in front of it, anomia, turning it into its antithesis, lawlessness. It really should be. The New American Standard is much better there. It's, although iniquity entails that, obviously, um, but lawlessness really centers in. So, let's begin our examination of the Constitution by Yahweh's perfect laws and altogether righteous judgment. Now, obviously, we don't have the time to examine <clears throat> excuse me, all seven articles and 27 amendments um, this weekend. Um, at least I intend to get home a little bit quicker than that would take. <laughs> Um, And I think my family hopefully would like to have me back a little bit quicker than that would take. So I'm limiting myself in in this message and the following two messages to what I believe are the most consequential and damning portions of the entire document, document, and that being the preamble, Article 6, and Amendment 1. And I think that uh, unless you've already read the primer through, um, I think you'll find some things that we're going to share I hope alarming, I, I truly hope alarming to see that, we, that what, what this document really is that we have been supporting. Beginning with the preamble, 
Quote, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Because we have been so dumbed down in this country to where we can no longer think without the promptings of the specialists, um, the talking heads on the boob tube, we read that or we hear it and it's like, glory, glory, what a great thing. And we don't really, and perhaps because we have yet to really internalize Psalms 19, we haven't taken those things and, and examined them by the laws of Yahweh. Okay, now, beginning with the preamble, I just read it to you. It's here in the preamble, and this is one of the reasons why I say it is, it is, along with Article Six and Amendment uh, One, the most abominable parts of the Constitution, is that it's here that the framers established a new national God, a new national God. While they allowed for individuals to retain their own individual God, and hopefully that would have been Yahweh, but not necessarily, but they established a new na national God called we the people in place of Yahweh, the Christian God of the Bible, and thereby establishing a secular humanistic theocracy. And I know to the average person that it, that it just doesn't sound right, <clears throat> excuse me, to identify we the people as a God and the constitutional republic as a humanistic theocracy. You know, a, a human theocracy, you know, that, that, that sounds oxymoronic, doesn't it? Because of the way we've been taught to think. It's not oxymoronic at all. We've only been led to believe it's oxymoronic. But the United States Constitutional Republic, or I should say the, the United States Constitutional Republic, is actually only one of, of uh, many governments in which we the people not necessarily and obviously not identified as such, but we the people have replaced Yahweh as the God of their society. In fact, except for when it's done as God would have it under his theocracy, they have all, all of them, all of them have replaced Yahweh with we the people as a God. Not all theocracies are Christian. Some are Jewish, some are Hindu, some are Buddhist, and some are secular. There, the, the fact is, there is no escaping theocracy. Think about it in these terms. A government's law reflects its morality, or in most cases, its immorality. And the source of that morality or immorality, is the source, is that government's God, right? It, it's a, more often than not, it's a false God, but it's a God. It's never a question, as so often, if we allow our antagonists to frame the argument, it's never a question. Don't let them do this to you. It is never a question of theocracy or no theocracy. To frame the question in such a fashion is once again to let them frame the parameters of the debate, and when they frame the debate, we lose every time. It's time that we take back control, dominion of even the debate and put it into its right parameters. It's never a question of theocracy or no theocracy, but whose theocracy? The people, by way of their elected f officials, are unequivocally, nobody can argue with this, the people, by way of their, their representatives, are unquestionably the source of the Constitutional Republic's law. Making them what? Therefore, the Constitutional Republic's God is we the people. Today, people, you know, recoil at the idea. I mean, well, you talk theocracy, particularly now that the, the Islams have invaded the country and with their, their ideas. You know, I always tell people, hey, they just take their, their, their religion more seriously than Christians do. Um, 
And, and the idea is not to, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. That's for the last message tomorrow. But uh, people do recoil at the idea of a theocracy's morality being forced upon them. But because all governments are, in fact, theocracies, someone's morality is always being enforced, is it not? Aren't you having someone's morality or rather immorality being enforced upon you right now today and every day of your life? Somebody's morality or immorality is being enforced. It's an inevitability of government. And therefore, we're simply left with the question, which God, theocracy, laws, and morality will we choose to live under? Regrettably, we've chose to live under we the people's morality to date. Disastrously, in 1788, in ratifying the Constitution, Americans abandoned Yahweh as their national God and substitute, substituted we the people in his place. Let's look at some of the internal evidence from the preamble itself. And we're just touching, by the way, on the surface here. Um, as I mentioned, the, the, the big book where we go through, uh, there's a chapter devoted to every article, the preamble, every article and, the, and every amendment. Um, is probably online right now, 12 to 1300 pages, and we've tr trimmed it down to hopefully what will be 750 pages. So there's, there's much more than what I'm going to share with you here. This is just a sampling. But let's look at some of the in internal evidence. Before we do, Francis Schaeffer said this. He said, humanism is the placing, listen to this carefully, humanism, and, and by the way, I don't expect that anybody here would argue with this statement, but I want you to think about it in light of what we're discussing. I want you to think about it in light of the first three words of the preamble. Humanism, Francis Schaeffer said, humanism is the placing of man at the center of all things and making him the measure of all things. Not only are all governments theocracies, but as such, keeping that quote in mind, they are theocentric, that is, they are, they are centered, God-centered, or centered on the, their God. So it is with a government of, by, and for Yahweh. And so it is with a government of, by, and for the people. Where is our government focused? Are they focused on Yahweh? Or are they focused on the people? Well, more often themselves on themselves and pretending to focus on the people. But you get the point. Both are theocentric. All governments are theocentric. You can find the God of the society by what, they're, by what they, the govern, that government is centered on. And herein we find the battle that is so often described in the Bible. The war between Yahweh's will and man's will. Psalms 118 and verse 8, the middle verse, the, the centerpiece of the entire Bible puts it in this fashion. It is better to trust in Yahweh than to put your confidence in man. The first three words <clears throat> of the preamble, we the people, are an expression of that eternal conflict. That's what those three words represent, we the people. Listen, it's time we get back to the document that begins in the beginning, God, rather than the document that begins, we the people. The preamble, a new national God. Tomorrow's two messages, if you're able to return, I'll deal with um, Article 6, which established, established a new national law, and Amendment 1, which established a new national religion. Let's pray. Let's stand. Our Heavenly Father, once again.